In this video, we're going to build a pure CSS drop-down navigation. So at the top of the screen, you can see that we've got these options, much like you'd see on a website. Um, but when I click these, we get a drop-down. So we have a, a sort of two-tier drop-down system. Now this is all done using pure CSS. So you, we've obviously got the hover effect, which you can imagine is pretty straightforward using CSS. But the fact that we can click this, drop this down, move our mouse around, and then when we want to dismiss it, we can click anywhere else on the page and that will just disappear. So this acts exactly like you would find a normal JavaScript solution to this. Let's go ahead and build up the styling for this and then we'll look at how we get this nice functionality to drop down. All right, so we're not starting off with too much code at all. This is a pretty blank document. The only two things I have done is obviously laid my document out with an HTML5 doc type and I've linked in this global.css style sheet which is within this CSS folder just here and that's obviously empty because we're going to be writing everything from scratch here. The second thing I've done is I've linked in a style sheet from Google Fonts API which provides me with a font of my choice really easily so we can just make this look a little bit nicer while we're working with it. And I'm working with Open Sans, but feel free to pull in whatever font you want. Or you can just use the default browser font for this uh, web page. So what we're going to do then is start with the markup. We're going to take a look at how this is structured, start to make it look nice, and then add the functionality at the end, including the nice transitions and obviously the ability to click. So we need to define our navigation. For this, I'm just going to create an empty nav element. And I'm going to give this a class of nav main just so we can target that with CSS. Now you can include a logo of your choice, whatever you're doing here. But in this case, just to speed things up, I'm going to create just some text within a div and that has a class of logo. Now each of the navigation items we're going to add at the top of the page are going to be contained within an unordered list. So this just gives us the following, so unordered list and then each list item and then we can position these how we want. By default these will have bullet points and padding and margin, we'll get rid of all of that and make it look nice. So inside of each of these list items we want to include an anchor and we want that to go off either to somewhere if you just want this to be a single click link at the top or if you want this to be a drop down, just stick a hash in the href because that's not obviously going anywhere. The sub navigation will deal with that. And we're going to give this a class of nav item. And obviously within this, you're just going to have the text that you want. So we're just going to say amazing for the first one. And we'll deal with the content in just a bit. Let's make sure we at least get the look of this and the feel of this. Uh, nice before we go anywhere else. So I'm going to do this four times. In fact, let's stick with three just to speed things up. And I'm just going to write CSS here and then I'll just link off to a website here so I can actually test having a, a, an actual single click link at the top rather than it pulling a drop down. So we've got the flexibility between drop downs and going through to a website. So let's take a look at the page at the moment. It obviously doesn't look exactly how we want it to be. This is very plain. As I mentioned, we've just got our bullet points for our unordered list. Um, but let's add some content onto the page just so we can see how this reacts. So I'm just going to add a div here with a class of content. And I'm going to generate, I don't know, three or four paragraphs of lorem ipsum just so we've got something on the page that we can work with. Okay, so let's start styling this up. We'll start to style up the nav main. We'll style up the logo, the unordered list here, and each of the items within this, just so it looks a little bit nicer. The first thing I want to do is I want to change the font on the page. So I'm just gonna do this very quickly. Uh, I'm actually gonna set the margin on the page to zero as well, just to uh, get rid of any margin so it sits nicely at the top. And I'm gonna set the font to 1M. I'm using Open Sans and I have a sans serif fallback here. So the content, that div that we just created a moment ago, I'm just gonna give a padding of 30 pixels and let's start to style up the nav main now, just so we can get this looking nice. So this is obviously going to have a width of 100%. We're gonna give this a background color, so I'm gonna choose a dark gray like 222 and we can give this some padding as well. I don't know, let's give it a fixed height. You can obviously play around with these styles after we're done uh, to suit you. So I'm going to give it a foreground color of white. 
and we have the following. So it's already looking, starting to look a little bit nicer. So then what we want to do is just position the logo, get that out of the way and done with. So nav main, I'm going to target the logo. You don't obviously need to include it inside of nav main. You could just have logo like that. And for this, we want to float this left. We're also going to be floating that unordered list left as well. We're going to give this a height of 40 pixels and we're going to give this a bit of padding. So we're going to do 15 pixels on the top and the bottom and 30 pixels on the left and the right. And we're going to give this a slightly larger font size than the rest of the content, just so it stands out. And we're also going to give this a line height of 40 pixels. That just means it's going to uh, sit central here. Now you might have noticed that we've got this gap at the top here. If we just right click and inspect element on uh, this uh, unordered list, you can see it comes with some default padding and margin. That's the orange and the slightly green bit that you see towards the left of that. So we need to fix this as well as floating it and uh, styling up each of these items as well. So let's go ahead and do this. I'm going to say nav main. I'm going to target the unordered list within there. And we're going to set the margin on this to zero, as I mentioned, and the padding to zero because our unordered list has these by default. And we're going to float this left as well. And we're also going to change the list style type to none. OK, so now what we want to do is style each of the list items. Let's go ahead and just refresh and see what difference this has made. You can see it's uh, starting to look a little bit better. So let's go ahead now and float each of the list items left. So let's say nav main, unordered list, and each list item within there will float that left. So you'll now see these just sat next to each other. So now we've got the freedom to target that nav item class that we gave to each of our anchors. We're styling up the anchor because this is going to give us the widest area for a user to hover and click. We don't want to style up the actual list item. We are going to be putting some more content in here as well. So it's a good idea to target the anchors and that just means that's the clickable area for the user. So these are going to be a display of inline block. The reason we're doing this is because we want them to sit inline, but we want to be able to give them a padding, height and things like that. So let's go ahead and give these the same top and bottom padding as our logo, so they're even. And we'll slightly reduce the size of the padding on the left and the right hand side uh, because we obviously don't want too much spacing between each item. But obviously, this is up to you. We're going to give these a fixed height of 40 pixels, the same as our logo. And we're going to give these the same line height as well, just so they sit nice and even with the logo. So you can now see they're sitting pretty much even. But we want to change the color of these. So let's change that to white. And we'll get rid of the default text decoration that links are given. So that's basically the underline of the link. So we now have the following. So looking much better. So what we want to do now is just quickly do the hover effect. So we'll say nav item hover. And we'll set the background color to something a little bit lighter. So 444. And that's pretty much it. That's all we need to do. So we've now got the following. So we've got that nice wide area that users can click on. OK, so what we now want to do is look at styling the nav content. This is what's going to drop down when we go ahead and click one of these. At the moment, they're obviously just not going anywhere except for the last link, which directly goes off to a website. So we're going to style these up so they're visible here. Then we're going to hide them and then we're going to add some transitions on them as well as the effect that we get when we click on one of these links. And that's relatively straightforward. So where are we creating this nav content? Well, we're going to create it within the uh, list item. So it's next to the list item. That's really, really important because the CSS selectors that we're going to be using I mean it has to be next to it or somewhere along the same level as it to be able to style it. Um, we can also target elements within elements, but in this case, because we're using an anchor, we don't want to put all of our content within this anchor. It'd be a bit silly. So I'm going to create a div then called nav content. That's going to house all of our content. 
And I'm also gonna create another div called nav sub. And the reason I'm doing this is because we're going to be giving a maximum height to nav content. And that maximum height is going to be zero. Now, what that means is that the element's not going to be shown, but then when we add a transition, we can increase the max height, which means that it nicely flows down. Now, if we just plonk everything we need inside of here without a, a, an element containing it, things can get a little bit messy. So we're adding a little bit of extra markup just so we can achieve this effect a little bit easier. Uh, there are other ways around this, but we'll stick to the easiest way for now. So inside of this, then we're gonna create more unordered lists and list items of just literally sub navigation. So we can say anything about us. We can say, do you really care what is here? So something a bit longer. And we're just being silly here, so we'll just say, of course you do. So we can duplicate this down. Um, you can add literally anything you want inside of nav content. You can add text, you can add whatever you want, images, it really doesn't matter. So I'm just going to say nav sub here, and I'm just gonna say some text. So play around with this. Obviously it will vary depending on what your, uh, what your site is. But you can see here, we've got this kind of um, drop down sitting next to each of these at the moment. And it's pulling things away, but we're obviously gonna fix that up with a bit of styling. And this text here is white, because remember we gave a, a white foreground color to the whole of the navigation. So let's start then with just styling up these nav content elements. So nav content. And inside of here, what we're gonna do is change the positioning. So we're gonna say position, we want this to be absolutely positioned. The reason we're doing that is so we can position them properly so we don't get this kind of problem here. So it's a little, a little bit messy. So I'm gonna set the top to 70 pixels just so it sits nicely under our navigation element. If you are adding borders to your navigation, you're going to need to increase this value. Uh, but otherwise we just have a, fi a fixed 70 pixel height with no borders or anything like that or any padding on the actual element. So we're gonna set the overflow here to hidden, just in case anything comes, uh, anything is sort of larger than the max height that we give it. It shouldn't do, but we'll add it just in case so it doesn't mess up anything. And I'm gonna set a background color here to the same color as my main navigation. And we could change the foreground color again, but really that should have taken effect uh, up in our nav main here. But if you do have any problems, you can fiddle around with this. So at the moment then we have the following. So we've got our uh, CSS drop down just here, which is in the correct position. Obviously everything looks a little bit messy because uh, we're showing both drop downs at once. And this unordered list with these links needs sorting as well. So what we want to do then is we're gonna say nav content and any anchor inside of there. We want to give this a color of white. And I'm also gonna remove the text decoration as well, but obviously this is entirely up to you what you do. And then I'm gonna say nav content, and I'm gonna apply a hover pseudo element to that. And I'm gonna say I want the text decoration back to underline. So that's basically going to give us the following. So just when we hover over, we get an underline, and obviously now the text is white. So the navigation sub then, that nav subclass we created, and this is the whole reason we needed to do this with the max height, is because we need some padding on here. If we apply padding to the nav content and we transition on the max height on the nav content, what that's gonna do is it's going to uh, screw things up a little bit. We're not gonna get that max height with the padding in there. So we apply the padding instead to that element within it. So we now have some nice padding in there. Let's fix up these unordered lists. So nav sub unordered list, and let's get rid of the padding. Let's get rid of the margin, and let's change the list style type to none, much like we did for the top menu, the first level. So I'm just gonna fix up the anchors within here. We can see at the moment, it's already looking a little bit nicer, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say nav sub ul uh, we can say LIA or you can just literally target A if you want. And then I'm going to say I want this to be a display of inline block. And that means we can go ahead and give it a little bit of padding. Five pixels on the top and bottom and zero on left and right. And that just spaces things out nicely. So we've now got these two drop downs. We can go ahead and just hide one if we wanted to. So if we just stick a display none on that, that shows what the 
uh, drop down for this will be here. So we've got the look of our drop downs working, but we now need to only show them when we click on them. So how are we going to do this without JavaScript? Usually you'd apply some kind of click event, add maybe a class to the navigation content that's next to that, and then you'd show your navigation. But we can actually do this with the focus pseudo element on our anchor here. So let's go ahead and apply this now. But the first thing we want to do is actually by default hide these drop downs because we obviously don't want them to display initially. So all we need to do is for nav content, we need to give this a max height of zero. You can imagine giving something a max height of zero means it doesn't show with the exception of if it has padding. So for example, if we did have a padding of 20 pixels on this nav content, it still shows. That's why remember we created this nav sub. So what we now need to do then is we're going to say nav item focus. You could move this uh, this line of code just up to your nav item area if you wanted to keep everything nicely organized, but we'll leave it down here for now. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to say background color 444. Essentially, all this is doing is when we click on one of these, watch that stays. So it focused now on this anchor. That's a focus event or or state, which means that that anchor is now in focus and therefore we can do the same for any of these. So we're already starting to see functionality that could be achieved with JavaScript done purely with CSS. But now we need to tackle the problem of how do we show this nav content by just having this focused? Well, what we can do is we can say nav item focus we can use the tilde, which basically means target any element along the same level of elements. So it's not nested elements or anything like that. It's basically any element along this set of elements. So the only other element we have along the same level as this anchor is this div here with nav content. So what we can do is we can say nav content. So we're basically saying when this is focused, target this nav content along the same level. So what we can do then is do something like max height 400 pixels, which is going to increase the max height of the nav content, which remember is zero. And therefore, when we click these, that's going to show them elements. Cool. So this is looking really good. Naturally, if we click anywhere else on the page, that anchor is now not in focus it's blurred which is the term for that um, therefore it disappears because our css is no longer um, applicable so we've done that but let's add a couple of transitions just to make this look a little bit nicer so we're going to use the transition property and with the transition property we choose an element to transition on and we're obviously transitioning on the max height being increased from 0 to 400 pixels uh, we choose a speed. So in this case, we can say something like 0.4 seconds, or you could say 400 milliseconds, uh, any speed you want, really. And then we have the type of transition. So this can be things like ease in, ease in out. It can be linear. But I like ease in for this, uh, this particular application. So I'm going to duplicate this down, because at the time of recording, I need the WebKit vendor prefix and I need the Moz vendor prefix. This is just how different browsers implement them. So they should be included uh, just while they're fully standardized across all browsers, then they can be removed. And WebKit obviously targets Chrome and Safari. Moz obviously targets Firefox. So let's take a look at this. If we refresh and click, you can see we get a nice drop down now because remember we're transitioning from that naught on the max height to 400 on the max height. So that is pretty much it. We've created a CSS drop down navigation, no JavaScript at all, works perfectly. We can click links here now, we can dismiss them. And of course, we've still got the option to have non uh, drop down links, which we can click and go through to.